Amen to that wonderful song? Amen. It's a wonderful song that we have a maker that knows each one of us by name. He knows the, the number of the hairs on your head. That's how personal God is to us. So good morning to everyone here. Bye, Bunda. Bye, enough to invest in us. And how does he invest in us? He gives us talents. He gives us gifts. And when he gives it to us, he expects us to increase it. And how do you increase it? You use the gifts that God has given you to bless others. And it's a wonderful ministry when you are participating in it. Amen? So we have all heard the saying that God cheerful giver. And why is that? It's because God is a cheerful giver. He loves to give. That's the only thing he can really do is to give and give. And how do I know that? It says in James chapter 1 verse 17, it says every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness that a shadow of turning. So you see that every good gift that we have, every perfect gift, is from the Father of lights above. And the Father doesn't change. He's always going to give. That's His nature. And He gave us a wonderful gift that no one would give. And that's His Son, Jesus Christ. It says in John 3, 16, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave. He's a great giver. He gave His only Son to us. Praise God. In giving His Son, God has also given us different gifts. And I was reading a book called Christ Object Lessons by our sister Ellen White, and she was writing these different gifts that God has given us, and I'll list them for you. One of them is the Holy Spirit. That's the gift that He promised. If you read in John chapter 14, the Comforter will come. It was a promise, a gift that God promised us. And the fulfillment was given on the day of Pentecost. Uh, God has given us talents. Some can preach. I, by God's grace, He allowed me to use this talent. Some people can sing, like the song, the beautiful song we just had. Some people have may not be able to preach. Some people may not be able to, to speak in front of people. So what is their talent? They have the talent of hospitality. Whenever I come home, the family's always like, come on, come on, come on, let's eat, let's eat. And I feel so taken care of, you know? Some people have that gift, and you can use that for God's glory. Um, other talents are cooking. Maybe you know how to cook very well, and it's inviting for people to come and want to eat in your house. And that gives you an opportunity to share with them Jesus' love. And I noticed also in the Philippines, there's so many, you can start a business on your own. Like, me and Mama Rachel went and we got puto in the morning <laughs> once. And I'm like, wow, you can start your own puto business, you know, it's fairly nice. Um, we all have a talent. Maybe that's your talent, making puto for the community. So you can use that for God's glory. Amen? Other talents are, or gifts, is our mental faculties, meaning like education, what do you train your mind to focus on? Because sometimes our minds are not thinking about things of heaven, right? We're thinking of different things. But when you focus things on godly things, like Christ-like things, it will develop. It's a gift. Because when you use a gift, it develops more strong, stronger. So that's also a gift, your mental faculties, the way you use your mind. Um, Another one is speech, which I can't be sure we spoke about. Speech entails or it involves preaching, it involves teaching, it also involves singing, the way you speak, you know? And um, it also involves how you talk to one another. So how you speak to your family members or how you speak to your neighbors. You speak with a kind tone, a sweet tone, an inviting tone. That's ministry, because you're, that's how Jesus
Jesus spoke, Jesus spoke with kindness and love and, and a good tone. So that's a talent too. Another one is influence. Some of us don't know that, but our influence is a gift. It's a talent that we have. Um, I realized this in my Christian walk. Your influence can only be divided in two ways. It can be influence for good or influence for bad. And I had that realization that I, I can see like when I'm around my friends and I'm not being how I should be, it can turn them away from Christ slowly but surely. But, and that's when I have to pray. I have to pray to God and say, Lord, I have wasted my time. I have misled my friends. Because God forbid when Jesus should come, right? And we are not on the side of the Lord. And we are in the hellfire, God forbid. And you see your friends there. And it was because of you that they ended up there. God forbid, right? That's why influence is a powerful thing. It's a powerful gift. Let us pray that in the beginning of the morning, that God be in our hearts. So that when he's in us, only thing, the only thing that can outflow from our hearts is Jesus. And it will be an influence for good. And then you'll see each other in the heavenly kingdom saying, your friends will tell you, thank you so much for following Jesus. Because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have known such a great gift of salvation. I wouldn't even be here right now. So I pray that I can see my family and friends. I pray we can all be there. And I pray that my influence, even right now, is good for all of us. Amen. By God's grace. Um, our time. That's one, that's one that's not really easy to practice, you know, because time, we are so busy with our, our work, our, you know, our pleasures and such, but it says in Christ's object lessons, our time belongs to God. Um, every moment is His. And why is that? Because He bought us. He bought us on Calvary with a price. We belong to Jesus. And he's not forceful about it. He's more so like a fatherly, careful. He's a careful father about us. He, he cares about us. And it says here, the value of time is beyond computation. What does that mean? So the time is so valuable, you can't even calculate it. It's so, the value is so valuable. Precious, right? It's so precious. Time is precious in the heavenly kingdom. Christ regarded every moment as precious. So Christ knew for himself. When Christ came on earth, he knew himself that his time belonged to God. He never reserved time for himself to go frolicking around like, you know what, maybe I'll go play some video games. They didn't have video games back then. But you know what I mean? In Jesus' time, they had their own leisures and their pleasures. But Christ never, he never deviated. He never went his own way. He said, Christ, what, I mean, he said, God, what would you have me to do today? And praise God for that. Um, so Christ regarded every moment as precious. And it is thus that we should regard it. We should think of time being precious. Life is too short to be trifled away. We have but a few days of probation. How many of you know that Jesus is coming back? Raise your hands. How many of you know? And is he coming back soon or later? Soon. Soon. Soon and very soon. We shall see the king, right? And right. And it's so soon that we need to count time as precious. And I'm so glad that in the Bible it says a verse in Ephesians, redeeming the time. Because we have lost, we wasted our time, maybe in our bad influence. But God is able to redeem the time. So that's what I pray for when I know I've messed up. I say, Lord, please redeem the time that I have lost. Right now, every moment that I have now, please let me use it for your good. And forgive me for what I've done wrong. Please change it, you know? Um, and you can do that for yourselves. Claim that promise that God can redeem the time. Um, it says, now is our time to labor for the salvation of our fellow men. So with time, what are we using it for? What is, why is it precious? It's because we have to use it in saving others. We have to use it to reach out to others who may not know Jesus. Because to be honest, there are people out there who are dying 
for this. They are dying because of Jesus. They love Jesus so much that they would not even sin. They would rather pick death over dishonor. Praise God for that. And there are people out there who are dying without a knowledge of who God is. And we have this. We're so privileged to have this. So what is the mission of the Seven Day Adventists? We're, we're here to call people out from Babylon, right? You heard of that in Revelation. We're here to call people out and bring them to Jesus. We have the truth. If you really study the fundamental beliefs, when you study the Bible, you go to Bible study, you will realize more and more what a privilege it is to be a seven-day Adventist. We have the truth. But why are we hiding it? <laughs> let, us, let, us have, let us have faith and let us have you know, gladness that we have this truth and not be ashamed to share it, you know? And share it in love. Share it centered on the, the one thing that is centered on, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen? Um, another talent or another gift is health. That, that's one that's hard too, right? We love to eat. Mm, gauna, gauna. God. 
Some think that only a portion of their means is the Lord's. When they, think, when they have set apart a portion for religious and charitable purposes, they regard the remainder as their own, to be used as they see fit. And I'm closing on this point. And basically, we basically believe that when we give the 10% to God, the rest is like, okay, I'm going to use it for video games and, uh, and everything else. I don't know. Um, battles the wood, maybe. <laughs> um, but the Lord wants to use it for His glory. So when He gives you the rest, you see, God, basically what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that God gives us gifts, not for you to hoard it for yourself. God wants to give you gifts so you can use it to bless others. In heaven, it is called the circuit of beneficence. And you can read that in Desire of Ages, chapter 1. A circuit always goes. What does beneficence mean? Beneficence, look at the word, ben benefit. You're always benefiting others. So God is the source, and he gives to say, okay, let's use this example. God gave to Lucifer. Think about this. He gave to Lucifer. What does Lucifer mean? Bear, light bearer. Light bearer. Right. Lucifer means light bearer. Was Lucifer the light? No. Was he the source of his own light? No. It was God. So God gave Lucifer light, light bearer, to do what? To bear light to the others. But what did Lucifer do? God gave him the light, and Lucifer said, okay, I'll take this light. And he said, this is my light. I'm the one who's, I'm the one who's doing this. But that's where sin came in heaven. It was when Lucifer looked to self and became his own source. So God desired us not for that to happen. He wants us to take to give so the circuit of life can always go on. And I'm going to close on that point. And I pray that we may all represent what God is in heaven. And that is a great giver. God bless. Magnify all that you supply, and lift it up my.